Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by to watch this video. I hope you learned something uh, insightful with it. Today I wanna show you four Excel functions and I wanna focus on these four Excel functions because there's a lot of new software on the market. A lot of the software that I use, a lot of the software I help my customers with, um, uses Excel-like functions in the software. It's called low code or no code. And so if you want to um, do this on your own, you kind of have to be really, really comfortable with doing formulas in Excel. And so that's what this video is all about, is showing you either for the first time, if you've never used functions in Excel, um, or if you're a seasoned veteran, uh, maybe you've not used these functions before. And the whole point is definitely practice Excel functions as much as you can. Um, they're very powerful, and you're not getting the full potential out of Excel unless you use it. But more importantly, it's teaching you a skill that moving today forward in these low code, no code systems, you're gonna need to learn to use it. Otherwise, you'll hire somebody like me to go ahead and design and or build something for you. Um, and we do other things too, as well as full coding and full applications from scratch. But in any event, let's get, uh, let's jump into Excel and see how we can uh, benefit from these four functions. So here, what I have is a, a, uh, a file path. And I've only got a handful of files, so this may not make sense to go through all this rigmarole, right, for a handful of files. But imagine if you had a couple thousand or tens of thousands of these and you needed to do this. Doing this by hand and notepad would just, oh, Lord, it would, it would be hard, okay? So this is where functions are gonna come into the rescue. The goal here is we wanna extract the file name, which is 21.docx. That's the goal, that's what we wanna to get to. We wanna extract that file name from that file path that, that is over there. And so we're gonna use these four functions to do it, okay? So a couple things, let me close this help window because uh, we're gonna come back to this in just a few minutes. And the first thing I wanna show you is the length function. It's called LEN, which is an acronym for length. And it's the easiest one to use, okay? So all formulas, if you've never written formulas, get typed into the formula bar first thing you want to do is choose the coordinate like in example c2 is the uh, area within the spreadsheet that i'm going to add this function and i'm going to come up to the function bar and i'm going to type in equals and len and now what you want to be careful to do is not hit enter because you would think that enter would select it it, it doesn't you got to hit the tab key okay so if you look at the helper text just below it it says this function takes some text and this is the function len. If you click on the function len, it brings up that help menu and it tells you everything that you need to know about it. This is so simple with, you know, all we need to do is say, you know, what do you want to target for me to tell you how long it is? And in this example, I just wanna do, you know, A1. If you click on it, you're gonna get this long thing here. So just type in A2 because that is the column and the row that we're looking for, and then we're gonna close the parentheses because that's how a function works, right? It's the name of the function, and then you put parentheses, and then whatever you need to put goes inside those parentheses, okay? So again, very simple. If you've never used functions before, this one is a nice, good, friendly one to start, okay? Because the next, from here on out, we're gonna get really complicated. All right, so I'm gonna hit enter. And here we go. I've got 37, 43, 58. And what this is telling me is this is how long this string of text is. All of the stuff that's in A2 is 37 characters long. And it starts at 1 with C. Then 2 is the colon. 3 is the first forward slash. Okay, And we go on and on and on all the way to the end. And the number varies because the length of what you're seeing on screen also varies. Okay, so we're gonna take a bunch of these functions and we're gonna build them together in order to extract the file like I had mentioned early on. So the next function that we wanna learn about is find. The way find works is find will, first you say, what do you wanna find and where do you wanna find it? Like essentially, I may even have gotten that backwards. But in any event, what we wanna do is come up here and type in equal find, hit the tab key and find text. So yeah, what do we want to find? I want to find the forward or the backslash. Now, characters or text, when you're trying to find it, always needs to go inside of quotes, okay? You can't just put 
a backslash there. The only time you can put just something there is if you're looking for a number. Numbers don't need quotes, but it needs to be a number as a real number and not the number five as a text character, okay? So anytime it's text, it has to go in quotes. Just remember that, that's the rule of thumb, okay? So back to the formula and the helper text. So what do I wanna find? I wanna find the backslash. As Soon as I hit comma, I'm gonna be in the next one, within text. Well, I'm gonna look for it in A2. So I type in A2. And now you see, if I hit comma again, I'm gonna be within this start num. Start num is in square brackets. Square brackets means optional. You don't have to use it. And in this particular function, we're not gonna use it. So all we have to do is close the function. Again, functions have to have open and closing parentheses. Okay, so find is a little bit more complicated than length because we had to provide two parameters, which was what do you wanna find and where do you wanna find it versus length just says, I'll tell you how long something is, just point me to whatever it is that you wanna know. And so find is a little more complicated because it takes two parameters. Substitute. We're gonna crank up the intensity a little bit because that one is probably one of the harder functions um, that is in uh, Excel, at least for today's lesson anyway. And so let's go back to find and explain how this does. So if you'll notice in all of the strings, right? Basically we got a bunch of files that we need to extract the file name and all of them are in the documents directory, which is off of the C, off of users, off of my name or your name or whoever's name. and then inside the documents folder. But there's four, one, two, three, four backslashes in there. When you use the find function, find doesn't care how many backslashes there are in this instance, the way I wrote it. It only looks for the very first occurrence. Okay, so that's something to remember, but we can use this to our advantage and we will in just a few minutes. Okay, so remember, find always finds the first occurrence of whatever it is that you're looking for. But we don't want to know that because in all honesty, what we wanna do is we wanna know the position of this particular character, the last or the fourth forward slash. And what we wanna do is just kind of take everything off the end, right? But we gotta build this in pieces. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use this substitute function. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna use the substitute function to do something pretty tricky. First thing what we're gonna do is we need to make a unique character and a unique character will allow us to use the find function in the future um, because again, it only finds the first occurrence. So what we wanna do is we wanna to try to replace this final fourth backslash with something that's not used that often. Let's use a tilde. If you're not used to what a tilde or don't know what it is, it's a horizontal squiggly, okay? You can see it on the screen. Um, maybe I can scroll in just a little bit more. It's this little funky character right there, okay? So anyway, what I wanna do is I want to replace that, um, or substitute rather, that final fourth backslash with a t with a, the tilde. And so we're gonna use the substitute function for this. So I'm gonna use substitute and again, hit the tab. And first thing we're gonna do is we gotta tell it, okay, what are we gonna do? Old text, where well, we got text, old text, new text, and instance number. Okay, so let's start with the text. Text is on A2, comma, the old text. Well, that's the backslash, right? That's what we want to get rid of or what we want to replace. And the new text, we want to replace it with that tilde or that horizontal squiggly, right? Now, in this particular occurrence of this function, this optional parameter, we do want to use it. We want to use it to our advantage because instance num, if you translate it into plain English, it says what occurrence or what occurrence of this you know, old text is it? And in this case, we know there's four backslashes. We wanna replace that fourth one. So, because we're putting in a number, we don't have to put in quotes and a four. Remember I said numbers don't use uh, quotes. We wanna use literally the number four because we want the fourth, the numerical fourth occurrence of that backslash. And so with that being said, 
Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close up the parenthesis because we've used four uh, parameters in here. So we've got where are we going to find it, and which is the column A, row two. We want to find the backslash. We want to replace the backslash with a tilde. And the fourth occurrence of the backslash is what we want to focus this on. So when I hit enter, we're going to get this whole string again, except this time. Let me close this up. Except this time, you'll notice that we got tilde 21, tilde backup key, we've got tilde digital transformations, okay? So this is great. So now what we want to do is now we're going to start stacking um, the functions together. And this is going to get a little funky. So I'm going to take this on my clipboard. I'm going to leave the equal symbol there and I'm going to cut it. Okay, so if I go control V to paste it, it's still there. It's on my clipboard. Remember, find finds the first occurrence. Well, since the tilde is the only tilde in there, this is perfect. So what we want to do is another find function. We're going to go find, again, find text within text. So what do we want to find? We want to find that tilde, okay, comma, within text. Okay, well, technically we want to find it in A2, but we know that doesn't work, right? Um, what we want to do is paste in that other function, and this is how you create complicated functions. First get one of them working. Have it work the way that you expect it, and then start putting them together, and you'll get some really complicated looking um, functions in the formula bar. And if you didn't do it yourself, and you just looked at it, which is what we're going to see here at the end, you will be scratching your head like, oh my God, what does that mean? And so the easiest way to deal with this is to break it down, okay? So I'm gonna paste in this other function, okay? Now remember, I have to close that find function, so I need to put one more parenthesis on the end of this, okay? And I'm gonna hit enter. Now I have the number 30, and I have the number 30 all the way down. And the reason that I have the number 30 is because that backslash is always in the 30th position based on what I have, okay? So this is what's gonna get pretty interesting. If I take 37, which is the entire length of the string, and I minus 30 from that, I'm gonna get seven characters. Well, ironically, if I come over here to 21, I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That is perfect. So, how can I use this now to my advantage? Well, let's use the write function. And what the write function says is, get me some text from the right side of the string. And it's gonna ask for some questions. And this is where we're gonna use the length and the substitute value to give us or return that right part, okay? So this is gonna, we're gonna start off real simple and then we're gonna end it up really complicated because we're gonna stack a bunch of functions together. Okay, and so for file, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that write function. So we start with equal. Oh, actually I'm not in the formula bar, that's why it's not working. Equals write, okay. So write text and the number of characters. So I wanna do from the text A2. Okay, I want the right side of the text from A2. And it says, how many characters, okay? So I, I told you we were gonna start off simple. I'm gonna put seven in here. And, okay, I got A1 working right, but the rest of them aren't working right. And so we need to make this dynamic. So why not, let's use the rest of those functions. Instead of seven, why don't we take the length of the string, which is 37. So in this case, it's C2. So let's, whoops, let me go back here. I wanna replace the number seven with C2, okay? So 37, and now I wanna do a mathematical um, calculation. I wanna take the 37 and I wanna remove the value from substitute, which is E2. And now I should be able to hit it. And lo and behold, I've now extracted 
exactly what I need. Now, for most of you, you may just want to stop right here because maybe you just simply want to take this and do control shift down arrow and it'll grab hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands, thousands, hundreds, whatever you've got and copy it and put it in a new sheet and, and be done with it, right? Because now you've extracted it and that would work. Um, but when you get used to using more of these functions, you want to be able to stack them all together. So one of the things that you can do is we're going to take this simple length function and we're going to come over here to this one and I'm going to replace C2 and I'm going to use the function that was in C2 that we built earlier. So I'm going to do len A2. I'm going to leave the, the minus symbol there and I'm going to replace this E2 with the function that we created in E2. So I'm going to go all the way and use that find to the end. And I'm going to come over here to this Oops, we didn't use that function. We gotta come over here and get rid of C2. Okay, so we got rid of C2, and now I have the length, which is that 37, minus, and then that formula that we have for finding the substitute, right? Which is 37, which is gonna give us seven. So now, we can get rid of all of these formulas because we don't need them anymore. And this is how we stacked up. Now look at this function on its own. It is hellacious. It's long, it's confusing, but that's how you take functions, build them out baby steps, piece by piece by piece, and bring them all together so that you can actually get something to work. So it's neat now, you can take off and store this, um, you know, if you do this work repetitively, you can just copy this formula out and put it in a library and then just change it out the next time you need it. So um, in any event, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, it was a little bit of a long video, but you know, when you're learning these complicated things, I wanted to take it slow. And if you have any questions, uh, need any help with Excel or formulas and or any of the applications that is out there, including Airtable, Coda, Power BI, Power Apps, um, there's a plethora of things that's out there that we do. So anyway, reach out to us and we'd love to create a solution for you. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.